Yeah, roll in. All right, so dude, I had an idea. Lots of comments in the last video about the sad brew magic sitting down in the warehouse. I figured, why don't we go down there, dust the old girl off, and see if she still works. You remember how to use it? I haven't, no, dude. I haven't used that thing in 10 years. We'll figure it out. Right. Let's see what we can do. Hey, Dylan, we're gonna go downstairs and try to dig that brew magic out and use it. You got a minute? <laughs> brew magic. We're gonna, we're gonna do it old school. Sick. You want me to call Joe? Uh, yeah, I do want you to call Joe. We're actually going to need Dan, too, because I think we're going to have to forklift it onto the brew deck. Yeah, we'll get him. He doesn't have anything to do. Hey, we're going to bring the brew magic up and put it on the brew deck. You know where that brew magic is? Hey, guys. The little guy. I think I'm more excited right now than I was the first time we used this thing. No, for real, though, do you think we're going to be able to fork truck it up? We're going to have to fork truck it up and then lift it off by hand. Yeah, I don't think it's that heavy. I think we can do it. Sweet. Oh, beautiful. Or I thought it could be worse than that. Here she is, man. Is it heavy? Funny story. We had sold this all the way back in 2013 to Barnstable Brewing Company. And they called us up like four weeks ago and they were like, hey, do you guys want to buy your brew magic back? And we were like, yes, as a matter of fact, we do. So we bought it back. The old girl is home, and now she's gonna get a uh, she's gonna get a run through. Obviously, you can just use a 20-pound propane. We may want to replace these lines, but basically, this is just a little heat X right here. Okay. It's a little heating element, and to maintain your mash temperature, you recirculate through this guy as you do your mash rest, and then you. To heat your water, I believe it's just direct fire. Okay. That's the whole system. But we can so close. it needs propane? It needs propane, it needs a little bit of TLC, but other than that, I think we're just gonna go for it. I figured we'd put it up on the brew deck and then run it simultaneously with a big brew. What are you gonna brew? We're gonna brew the, I don't know what we're gonna brew. What should we brew? Project Final Limit 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got some pre-ground pre uh, two row coming for that, that other classified experiment. This thing's gonna be the biggest pain in the ass. So I can, uh, once we figure out what we want for supplements, so we can grind those up too by hand. I just posted a recipe on a short on YouTube. It's like super, super basic, and I think we'll probably brew that. Okay. We have that London Ale pitch coming. We can probably pull off of that and then use a little piece of it because I want to ferment with that actually. This heat X I think is gonna be the biggest problem because given our hop dosing rates, I remember having a hard time with this way back in the day. I got this heat exchanger right here. What's that? I got this heat exchanger right here. That was the one we ordered for the other classified project. Is it a little one like on the water skid? Yeah. Jojo! Hey, boys. Get on your horse and grab this, please. So, dude, in, in Brimfield with this heat X, see how there's a garden hose on here? Yeah. We used to pull water out of Damien's koi pond. <laughs> and recirculate through the heat X. That's back why in, the fish are so ornery now. Back in, back in the koi pond. <laughs> oh, this is an actual Sabco. Yeah, this is one. Holy shism. We just never used it for that other thing. Wow, dude, and it has these little tri-clamps on it and everything? Dude, it's like it was made for this project. That is sweet. We're just spoiled. I think we would, need a, we would need a floor pump to push wart through this guy. Because we have that little pump on that with the little quarter inch lines, but reducing to this on a real pump would be a problem, is what I'm getting at. I have a hard time believing that we just ordered a heat exchanger with no pump. I'm gonna have to look around this place. We might wanna see if we can McMaster overnight something. Okay. Inch and a half to half inch. Yeah. Try clover. All right, sweet. We'll bring this up, we'll bring the brew magic up. Yep, what do you want to do? Oh, we'll make Joe pick it up. Come on, Joe, use your fancy machine. Al, you got a radio? Hey, Dan, don't drop it.
<laughs> okay, Danimal, thank you. What are you thinking? We'll carry it up piece by piece? No, I'm gonna cut that handrail out. You're gonna what now? I'm gonna cut that handrail back out where we did that. And just once we get it clean and set up. I was thinking if you you could take these off, carry these up one by one, and then if you lifted the frame, we don't have to take the handrail off. Alright, well that makes it like maybe a little bit more sense, <laughs> I guess. Alright. Well. Are you thinking we'll clean it down here? Yeah. Make sure everything works and stuff. Oh yeah, everything that we make now, pretty much, with the exception of probably Hayes. Uh, Hayes alter ego came later, but Julius Green, King Julius, Fairy Green, uh, all those original treehouse beers, Sap, Old Man, that's what she said, brewed on this guy, and hundreds of times. We're giving it the once over as we like to do. Obviously, we don't want any brewing liquor or any wart to touch any part of this brew magic that might be soiled or dirty or something like that. So Lex is going to replace these lines with fresh lines, make sure everything is good and, good and tight, ready to go. Checking all the safety mechanism, checking all the interlocks, changing all the gaskets, replacing all the gaskets with new gaskets, cleaning and passivating all the stainless steel, getting it ready for wart to uh, come in contact with it. Treating this guy the same way we would treat a 60 barrel batch of beer, that's for sure. How many batches in a day do you Usually three. Uh, I, I don't entirely recall how long it would take. It was something like 6 a.m. till 8 p.m. a lot of the time. Uh, and many times I was doing that, you know, four or five days a week. Yeah, I think there was even one time where I did a quad batch on this guy. But it was, these were very long days for very little payoff. It was. Very, very dark right, times for me personally. So if you're doing three batches a day, how much do you yield at the end of the day? Well, it'd be 10, 10 gallons per batch. So we'd yield one barrel, which is roughly 31 brewing gallons in a day. 12, 14 hours of labor. Whereas now, in 12 or 14 hours, we can run roughly two batches through the 60 barrel brew house and brew 120 barrels. So we brew 120 times more now than we had when we originally had this brew house with the same amount of effort, roughly speaking. Maybe more so, this is actually pretty labor intensive. Mash in by hand, drain out by hand, uh, wort transfer is always really challenging. We were actually carrying the fermenter from the garage into the basement across a driveway, which was always really precarious. And then we were siphoning the subsequent two batches into the fermenter using gravity. Um, thereafter, so each batch we had to carry the wart across the driveway and uh, put it into the basement where it was a little more temperate than the, than the barn. We brewed commercial beer on this guy for better than 12 months. We talked about the five barrel brew house in the warehouse video. This guy, I brewed on this guy in the shadow of the five barrel brew house when it had come in and we were waiting on certain electrical connections to happen. So I'm staring at this device that could make 15 times what I was making now per turn for almost three months while I waited for that guy to get hooked up. And I just hated my life. I, I did not like life at all at that point. Hi guys, how are you? This is fun, we have an audience. Did you do pilot batches on this? No, we don't, we don't do pilot batches. Uh, you know, originally this technically is a pilot batch brewery, but we were making commercial batches and we, we couldn't afford to fail. Uh, in fact, in the first, I want to say six years of Treehouse, I never dumped a batch, which to me is not necessarily a good thing because I think every once in a while, everyone gets something a little bit wrong. So if you're not dumping batches at least periodically, I question quality control, but for us, we, it was do or die at all times. Um, and the demand was so suffocating that all that work, 12 to 14 hours worth of brewing over the course of a day or more and then three weeks of fermentation, it's, it was gone in 20 minutes at that time. It was completely impossible to keep up with. Oh, oh dude, wow. clean as a whistle. Did they even use Look this at thing? Those guys. Do you remember this thing? I do remember that thing. Does it give you nightmares like it gives me? No. I have PTSD over this thing. So why are you doing it? Why are you doing it?
All right, guys, well, I'm gonna be probably working on this until the sun goes down at minimum, trying to get it ready for a brew day. I'm thinking, again, we're making it up as we go, but I think this will be the first of a, a three-part series where we, we get the brew magic together in this one. The next one, we'll make a batch. And then in the third one, hopefully we'll tap that batch. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this content and uh, be good to each other. We'll see you in the next one.